There, my dad was a coon hunter. And I'm telling you what, I would have probably been seven foot tall and got a, got a scholarship to play basketball if dad hadn't walked my legs off to coon hunt. <laughs> and the only reason he wanted me to go coon hunting with him so I could carry the axe, the gun, and all that stuff. You know oh, what I mean? No. He wouldn't have to carry all that stuff. But anyway, <laughs> we coon hunted a lot. And we had that, this, dad traded in coon dogs. He'd buy 25 or 30 coon dogs during the summer and ship them into Ohio and Illinois and stuff, you know? He'd always keep try them all up. He'd always keep one or two of the very best ones for himself. But this particular right. winter, now we had one called Big Boy. And I'll have to say this, Big Boy was the absolute best coon dog I ever walked behind. I walked behind all the good ones. Hmm. Anyway, it's Christmas vacation during Christmas and New Year. School was out. It come a snow. And I'm talking about a big snow, like a foot or better. Temperature got down to zero and below. It drug on for about four or five days, maybe a week, and I mean, we we getting cabin fever really, really bad. And there were just a few spots on the south hillside you could see open. Dad said, Glenn, he said, there's a few places melting on them south hillsides, so them coon will stir tonight, so we need to go. It's still just cold as it can be, you know. And I said, all right. So we load up old big boy, and we drive down off, off that horseshoe bend road and park down what we call the Feltner Place. Picked off from there and walked down to the White River. Bottom, down, walked across the bottom all the way over the river and we started up that river. Now we're crunching snow, you know, ankle deep, tromping up through them bottom stuff along that river and Big Boy takes off up that river, of course. Now it's about four miles up that river to the toe of the Horseshoe Bend. We walk all the way to the toe of the bend and Big Boy didn't open his mouth. Dad said, I don't believe the stirring, son. Oh, no. I said, oh, really? <laughs> we turned and we started back. We barely took three steps going back, and Big Boy opened on the other side of the river. And we stood there a few minutes. He was coming down the river on the other side. And we stood there a little bit longer, and he opened on this side of the river. And we headed on back down the river, and Big Boy was in front of us. And he was heading down the river after that coon. I said, Dad, I'll bet you five dollars to hold on to that when he treats that coon to be on the other side of the river. He said, I don't doubt it. I bet Big Boy crossed that river at least five times down through there for the next three or four miles. We got down just about even with where the truck was he treat on the other side of the river. <laughs> well, we walked out of the gravel bar and shined a light over there on the other side of the river and a big old tree over there. We could see that coon's eye sitting up there about a hundred foot. They said, oh, you can walk across, you can wade across right up here, son. So it won't be needy. Now, bear in mind, it's about 10 degrees. Oh. <laughs> oh. We walk up there about two or 300 yards, you know, where the shoal was. Yeah, it looked like it'd be about knee deep. So I take the, tw so that night I was carrying a 22. Usually I carried a pistol. I took the light and the 22, and I started wading across there, and it, it was knee deep. It come clear up to my fork. Yeah. Anyway, I get across there and I go down there and I shoot the coon out. And I thank God to this day that it was a big one. I bet it weighed 24, 25 pounds. It was a walk. Goodness. And I go back up there to go. In the meantime, Dad, he had come down there to watch, you know, to watch the program, see. And I didn't go back up as far as I was supposed to to cut back across the river. And I put in there and the further I went, the deeper it got. <laughs> and it was pretty good current, too. <clears throat> And I got the 22 on one shoulder, and I got that 20, 24, 25 pound coon on the other shoulder. And it's a good thing I have because the water got this deep and I'm getting buoyant. You know, I can't oh, keep no. my feet on the bottom, you know. I think I'm not going to get out of here, you know. <laughs> I'm getting deeper all the time. Anyway, I finally got enough traction I got out of there. We got, made it up to the truck. Of course, before I took 40 steps off that river there, my clothes just froze solid, you know. Made it all the way up to the truck. Got in the truck, Dad cranked it up, cranked up the heater. Every little bit, he said, you getting cold? I said, no, I'm fine. I wasn't, I wasn't cold. I had on long handles and, you know, jeans or whatever. Really heavy cold. Soaking wet, froze solid all the way. Get to the house, 
and I barely could get up the steps. Dad had to help me up the steps onto the front porch. I almost had to cut those clothes off. We like never got them off. Oh, heck. Got some more long hounds on, got in bed, never had a cold or nothing, see. But it didn't make any difference to Dad, you know, about me drowning that river. Wasn't he? I mean, he had seven kids. He could have got some more. <laughs> you know? oh.